creature sound design can be a very daunting task to undertake, especially if this is your first time attempting it. Truth be told, there is no one-size-fits-all answer to creature sound design, as the term creatures covers many different creature types, and all creatures come in different shapes and sizes. For this video, we are going to be primarily focused on what went into creating the Behomet Roar, but I'll also be dropping a few extra sound design hints along the way on other elements that went into this redesign. But most of it came from, you know, these videos here. Before we get started, if you do enjoy these videos and would like to support the channel, head on over to aftertouchaudio.com where we have a bunch of professionally recorded, royalty-free sound effects libraries for you to use on your next project. We are currently en route to sample well over 300 weapon sound effects libraries and dozens of tail packs for our Master Gun Armory bundle. We can separate the types of samples we use into four different categories. Keep in mind these are common categories, but let's be honest, it's sound design. Anything goes. These categories are just used to help give you a good direction on where to start, but I'll show you how I used each category in my redesign. It is no secret that having access to a large pool of high quality animal recordings is extremely helpful when tasked with designing creatures. If you ever get stuck when designing any sound, having the ability to browse through your sound effects libraries and stumble across a random sound that some random animal or object make can spark a lot of creativity and often leads to good jumping off points. Side note, what people think I do for a living, what I actually do for a living. When I start designing a new creature set, I usually try to look for real life animals that are similar in physique to the creature I'm designing. This does not always work, but it's usually a good place to start finding samples. In the case of Bahamut, what better creature to use than the real world dragons? Gators. I ended up using a few tracks of hisses and different frequency ranges of bellows to paint broad strokes for the Bahamut roar. From there, I felt I was missing quite a bit of oomph, so I reached for other animals to help fill the sound out. Walrus and bison recordings were used to give that guttural oomph, and a vulture recording was used to help give that top end screech, which ended up being a predominant element in the roar. <laughs> One super useful sound design trick is to pitch sounds around. I often look for samples recorded at 192 and using a microphone that can capture ultrasonic frequencies like the second C100K. I can also slow these sounds down to reveal a lot of the ultrasonic sounds some animals give off or even just make small animals large. <laughs> Whether the creature you are designing is a humanoid or a 50 foot tall dragon, using your own voice to design creatures can add a large amount of realism and expression to the finished design. For the Bahamut redesign, I used two voice recordings which included a snorty hiss and a more literal hiss. You can also use your own voice as an envelope shaper to influence other samples using plugins like Envy or Reformer Pro. This is a super useful trick if you want one sample to follow another sample's dynamics, pitch, or even just follow it spectrally. <laughs> Inanimate objects are super useful when designing creatures. Things like bellows, slime, whistles, instruments, and even chairs can all be super useful recordings. Uh, hold on one second. The inspiration for the Bahamut redesign actually started with this sample. Yeah. 
which was a rusty metal cable cover grinding against another metal object. And then we just pitched it down. It had such a large amount of character in the sample already that I actually designed the rest of the sound around this sample. I then used further props such as plastic on concrete and water gurgles made with a plunger. When designing creatures, really look around your house and play with some of the objects. You'd be surprised when you perform them how close they can sound to creatures. And finally, synth layers. You can use all kinds of noise to fill your design out, like popular EDM artists using um, white noise on saw chords, or even design elements that are unique to this creature. For my synth layer, I just added this impact sound when the roar starts to add a larger amount of intensity at the start of the scream. Okay, here's the finished redesign with a bunch of designed UI elements, magical elements, and even some foley. Before I have to go, I have two tips for anyone looking to improve their sound design game. Instead of redesigning the scene, aim to recreate the scene or your favorite sounds, getting as close as possible to the original, then branching out. When we learn an instrument, we usually try to learn songs from our favorite bands, which inevitably shape the way we play music. And the tricks or licks you learn can be applied to your own writing. When I was going through my mix, I was constantly referencing the original, trying to pick out mixing elements that were used like panning on the summon or the stereo width of Bahamut's wings. Once I got my design close to the original, I started adding my own creative spin on it and I ended up learning lots. This usually takes longer to design, but the end result is you learn a lot more about how sounds like these are made instead of blindly going into the sound. Once you have a bunch of licks in your arsenal, you can write your own music on the spot and sound like your own artist. When you are recreating a scene that has music, Try adding the music in to see if your sounds can cut through the mix. Not every sound needs to cut through, but you'll be surprised how quickly your redesign falls apart when you compare it to the context of a full mix. I even sometimes rip the ambiences, like in my Spider-Man web shooter video, out of the game to make sure that the sounds I design fit in the world that is being built. Anyways, if you would like to try this challenge out for yourself, consider joining my Discord where I shared this clip and the music track for you to put your own spin on it. Now, go make some noise.